my friend, this is Paul Hutchings with PipelineMoney.com. Super excited to make this video for you. I believe, my friend, that this video can be absolutely, completely life-changing for you and for me, and I want to encourage you to pay attention. Before I get into the content, though, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever heard that beliefs shape and sculpt and mold our experience and our reality in life? I remember when I first got started in home business back in 2005 and the owner of the network marketing company that I was working in at the time, he said, you've got to know what beliefs are and you've got to know how to change them. Otherwise, there's no way you can experience success in your life. And I remember him teaching me what a belief was for the very first time and here's what he said. He said, a belief is a conclusion reached about a thing, a person, or an event that whether it's true or not, it's believed to be true. And that conclusion can then go on to sculpt and shape and mold our lives. And what's a belief, really? A belief is simply an idea, but it's an idea that's been strengthened. And I, and I, and I got a great example from Anthony Robbins one time. He said, a belief is like, a, it's like the top of a table it's like an idea on the on the top, the tabletop, that's been strengthened with other ideas which act as reference points, like the legs of a table, that then support that idea that's across the top and it's strong and firm. Well, these are great as long as these tabletops are serving us and they're in alignment with truth and they're empowering us to move forward in the best way possible. Where's the problem? The problem comes when we sometimes have beliefs that hold us back from being who we were meant to be in the world. The problem comes when sometimes we have beliefs that prevent us from living life to the fullest, right? And that's when we want to we want to know how to change these beliefs so that we can get rid of them, right? If uh, whatever whatever false beliefs we have that are disempowering to us, we want to eliminate them. We want to we want to cause them to dissolve so that we can continue to step forward into our better future. So the question then becomes, how do we do this, right? How do we change belief? And for years and years and years, uh, again, I learned about this stuff back in 2005 originally, so I've been fascinated with learning and, and trying to understand how to change beliefs. And one of the ways, or I should say really pretty much the only way that I've used consciously over the last 10 years is repetition. I remember a good friend of mine, Justin uh, Vrenji, as some of you might know him, he's a hippie Jedi, one of my, one of my most amazing uh, friends and team members. He and I, for a long time, we would record these affirmations of positive beliefs that we wanted to have, and we would put like subliminal music behind them, and every night we would listen to those, you know, going to sleep, uh, and we'd hear our own voices say things like, you are powerful, you have unlimited potential, right? And we were endeavoring to install these empowering beliefs into our minds. And this is one way that we can do this, right? We can repeat positive ideas again and again and again. But I'll never forget an experience I had where I was down at a neuro-linguistic programming seminar and the instructor was talking about belief change. His name is Tim Halbum. Tim and Chris Halbum, they're some of the foremost uh, uh, world's experts on neuro-linguistic programming. And I remember asking him about repetition as a way to change belief. And I remember what he said. He said, it might work, although I think it's an incredibly slow and painful way to change belief, right? And I was like, what? You know, this is the only way I know. It's the way I've been using. Well, the reason he gave me that statement was because he knew that there were faster and better ways, right? And I actually want to kind of pre-frame what I'm going to share with you in this video by referencing back to another book, Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz. Uh, Dr. Maxwell Maltz talks about one of the ways to change belief is through logical thinking. That's one of the steps that he mentions in the book Psycho-Cybernetics, just thinking rationally, right, about our beliefs. Well, fortunately for us, there are 14 steps that uh, come from a book called Sleight of Mouth by Robert Diltz. And I was refer I actually got this book and I started reading it and then I was going through a product that I was that I had purchased uh, inside of the company that I represent, Empower Network. We've got a product called the Top Producer Formula. And my mentor, Dave, Dave Wood, in this video, I think it's like video number two, 
He goes through the 14-step belief change process that Robert Dills explains in the book Slide of Mouth in great detail, and he takes you through this step, this 14-step process, and literally with these 14 different strategies, you can dissolve beliefs that are disempowering you, and it made me think of Dr. Maxwell Maltz, how he says that through rational thinking, we can get rid of false beliefs. What this 14-step process is, is it's a framework, it's a systemized way to think rationally about beliefs that we might have that might be disempowering. So I want to share in this video with you these 14 steps, but I want to do it from a standpoint of actually picking a disempowering belief. And then as I'm sharing with you each of these 14 steps, I will do the best that I can to apply my understanding of, the, of each particular step to this belief. And I will uh, set this up also by saying that I am not yet an expert in these 14 steps. I'm working on understanding them myself. And so um, all the 14 steps I'm going to share with you are absolutely 100% accurate. I'm still working through the correct application of each of these steps. So what I'm going to give you are the 14 steps. Those are accurate. And then my application of these 14 steps may or may not be. And I would love your feedback down below if you have some better insight as to what these 14 steps mean and, and maybe how better to apply them. So let's pick a disempowering belief that's very, very, very common. And I'm just going to throw it out there. The, the, the disempowering belief that's very common and also very destructive to one's success is the belief that money is bad. Okay, a lot of people believe that money is bad. That's a belief that we want to work on through this video. So, step number one is called uh, is called intention, and the idea is you want to identify the positive intention behind the belief. So, uh, with the belief that money is bad, really the intention behind that belief is your unconscious mind wants to keep you safe and protected. It doesn't want you to do things that might be construed as evil or detrimental to your eternal progress, right? That's the positive intention. So one of the things that you can do with positive intention is once you've identified the intention behind the belief, you can simply ask yourself, is there another way that I might be able to keep myself safe and protected aside from having this belief that, that money is bad. So you might ask yourself this question, is it possible that I could be safer with a little bit more money? For instance, what if I could buy a great uh, alarm system for my home to keep my family safe and protected and I could do that with money? Wouldn't that be a better way to keep myself safe Right, uh, And that's just one example of what you can do with this positive intention. So that's number one, positive intention. Step number two is redefine. And what you do with redefine is you just redefine um, particular words or meanings in the belief. So with the belief that money is bad, one way to redefine it is to take the word money and redefine that word. So for instance, you could swap out money and you could say, uh, resources are bad, right? Because isn't money a resource and don't we buy resources with money, right? And when we say resources are bad, we instantly see that that's kind of ridiculous, right? Or we could swap out money, we could redefine the word money and put in the word freedom. And then we say to ourselves, freedom is bad. And that just sounds ridiculous, right? We know that freedom is not bad. So you can take pieces of the belief and redefine it. Here, here's another one. Uh, money, with money you can buy your house, right? My family and I, we were blessed to pay off our mortgage a couple years ago uh, through my business, right? So with money, we bought our house. So what if we swapped out the term money and redefined it as my house is bad? We see that that's not right, right? We see that that's ridiculous. So we can redefine, that's step number two. Step number three is consequence. And this is simply where you ask yourself, what are the good consequences and what are the bad consequences of me continually, continuing to hold this belief? So money is bad. Obviously, the bad consequences are you're going to prevent yourself from having it. Uh, you're not going to be able to provide for your family in the way that you want to provide for them. You might be chained down to a job working for someone else for the rest of your life, right? Those are some of the maybe negative consequences. What are some of the positive consequences of changing that belief? Well, you could earn more money, you could have more freedom, you could do more good in the world, right? Those are some of the good consequences. You can have a bigger impact maybe with money because your time is freed up and now you can serve more, right? So that's consequences, that's step number three. 
Step number four is you want to chunk down and step number five is chunk up. And this just simply means you take whatever it is uh, that's contained within your belief and you go to smaller levels. So for instance, uh, money is bad. Uh, another example of money, chunking down from money would be some of the things that you can buy with money, right? Uh, uh, energy is another example of maybe chunking down. A lot of people say that money is energy. So if you chunk down, would you say that energy is bad? Would you say that your car is bad? Would you say that whatever it is that you buy, the food you eat is bad, right? Chunking down from what money can get you. Um, you can chunk down and that can help you eradicate a, 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 non, a non-true, not useful belief. And then you can chunk up by saying, okay, what is money? What's a bigger picture of what money is? And a bigger picture of what money is, is uh, it's a tool of exchange. It's a tool of uh, trading value for value. So it's a way of, of, uh, of me exchanging some of my talents and resources with, uh, with someone else, with another person. And then we ask ourselves, is that bad? And we see that, no, it's not, right? So chunking up and chunking down can also help us eradicate false beliefs. And that takes us to uh, step number six, which is a counter example. Counter example simply means you find an example in the world of something that is contrary to that belief. So for instance, money is bad. Well, can you think of anyone in the world that has money that is not bad? Can you think of anyone in the world that has money that is doing great things? I know that fortunately, you know, we, we've been blessed with some financial success in my life and, and it allows me to spend more time with my kids, right? Does that mean that I'm bad? So you want to find examples in the world, positive examples of people or situations that disprove your belief, that negative belief. And a lot of times when you see those, they'll instantly melt away. Like in the church that I'm in, right? We've got uh, some leaders in the church that I go go to. All of them are wealthy. So that so in someone someone in in my church that was to have that belief money is bad, I could say, well, look at ex, look at this leader, look at that leader, look at you know this other leader that everyone looks up to. They all have money, and when they see that, oh, they just allow that belief that money is bad uh, to melt away. That's step number six counter example. My friend Paul Hutchings with PipelineMoney.com. Thank you so much for watching. I believe in you. I believe you have greatness within you. I believe you can be free. I believe you can impact the world if that's what you want to do. And I challenge you to go out there and make it so. Again, thanks for watching. Take care and bye for now.